On this week's episode of Ask Woodford, episode number 32, I talk everything about career and professional development. What is the best way to develop you as a performance coach? I talk about the USA COD system, how I got in the COD system, how you guys can get in the COD system. Okay, guys, we're gonna ask Woodford episode 32. I'm your host as always, Christian Woodford. I am back from the Sunshine Coast. Um, and when I saw my um, former uh, mentoree, um, Jordan Potts, who, as you know, we've had him on the show. He was horrendous on the show. He tightened up terrible. It's funny, Alex, because now he has a show. Guys, check it out. Can we tag it in the description? Um, him and a guy called, jo- a young guy, young coach from the stage, Joe Gurnley. Um, fantastic coach, knows what he's talking about, that's for sure. Only young 24, started coaching at 18 in the States, got a full-time job at 21. Fantastic story. They've got a podcast together, so I was on their podcast, Deep South to Down Under. Have a watch of it, have a listen. Um, fuck, it's pretty interesting to see how much Potty's changed. Um, still lacks the confidence to do it really well, but he's getting better. I thought it was fantastic, the question they asked me. I was myself. I had Joe's missus, dude, sit in the corner. Should have seen her face looking at the top. You know me. Yeah. I, she's a, you know what's funny? She's a psychologist. So she was psychoanalyzing me. And man, she was afterwards, should have seen her asking questions at me. Because I know, when, they, when people meet me like that, they've always, their background is trained to psychoanalyze people. She, she was obsessed with it. What you know, she couldn't get over. She goes, you just got so much energy, so much passion, so much, you're very full on. I said, no fucking shit. Tell, tell me something I don't fucking know. So I guess just what I love doing. And she, um, she just kept staring at me really, really weird. Because, you know, I'm just myself. It is what it is. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not. So, fuck, she was just, she kept, dude, she was looking. But me being me, I thought she was looking at me like, damn, this guy's hot. That's how I think of it if a woman looks at me that long. But fuck, it wasn't, wasn't be the case, obviously. Obviously not, because it's Joe's missus. So, we had that podcast, it was a fantastic workshop we had up in um, Sunshine Coast. Great, it, that, that was the best, the best work. Have you seen the reviews, the testimonials? The best workshop, I, I don't know, man, like just, I'm just, I'm at that stage now where I'm just really, I understand it a lot better than I did when I started doing workshops. Six year birthday next month. We'll do a six year Ask Woodford birthday as well. Out. Um, so yeah, fantastic, fantastic workshop. Loved it. If you guys want to come to our workshops, guys, check them out. We've got a lot coming up in the pipeline. Level one strength power speed next weekend, September 8th, 9th at Woodford Moorabbin with myself and Jay Ellis to do a level two, which is our brand new core strength power speed. You have to do a level one. So my suggestion is book in for this. Trust me. You want to come to our level two, New Zealand coaches, trainers, athletes, guys, get to my new New Zealand workshop. It's at uh, the Crusaders gym. Don't miss out on that. Because I might not come back from New Zealand for a long time. So guys, get to, the, get to the New Zealand workshop. And also, to any of my UK friends, because I've had a lot of people in the UK message me. Um, a lot of people from Ireland. Guys, if you want me to come internationally, I'm happy to go. But here's the thing. You guys have to help me out here, right? You need to tell me which gym, where, everywhere. Give me, help me out. If you're interested, email me, Christian Woodford SSC, or PM me. Guys, this is episode Ask Woodford 32. I'm your host. Let's do it. Alex, hit me. Cody Fitzgerald, you have mentioned that a great way to improve as an SNC coach is to intern in the US. How would someone go about doing that? As I assume it would be quite a difficult process. Okay, here's what I want you to do, son. If you're interested in interning in the States, understand this. You're Australian, they don't give a fuck, man, where you're, they don't care. They only care about Americans. That's how it is, bad luck. They think that they they actually think that their system is exactly the same to our system. I'll give you an example. I, I emailed Washington University, right? You know what the guy said to me? Why would you come here when you can go to the AS? That makes but, sense. No, I'll, I'll, I will get you that email if I still haven't sent it. Fucked, retarded, so stupid. But anyway, they don't, bro, they do not understand what we're like, no idea. They have no idea. Anyway, they're they're in a bubble, but it is what it is. Um, Just what? finish your post, bro. No. No, I will not. No, because you said that. No, I will not. No. What are you doing? Um, yeah. So they're in their bubble, and um, what you got to do, man, is you number one, don't rely on anyone else to do it. Do it yourself. Because for me, if you do it yourself, you're going to get more reward for effort. Like you're going to feel better. You know what I mean? Like when you go out, right? I'll give you an example. Let's say. Um, 
for example, this might have happened to you, this hasn't happened to me, but this might happen to you, right? Let's say you're from a rich family, right? I'm not, I'm from a working class family, G Wood and A Wood. So they've taught me the value of money, right? Now, I know a lot of people who have been brought up in rich families, right? Um, and they've got everything, their whole, their whole life they've ever had everything. If they want it, they've got it. I'm not saying that's good or bad, I couldn't give a fine fuck really, but I just find it interesting to watch different personal. I'm real big on personalities and how people act when they have something, when they don't have something. Like, um, if your parents have gone out and bought you like a brand new car, yet you're the opposite like me, who I've worked my whole life to buy a car, you're gonna have more self-satisfaction, you're gonna appreciate that car more. Do you see what I'm saying? So same as when people pay for my workshop or pay for my coaching. I've already told you this, right? You're gonna appreciate that more, aren't you? Because then when it comes around to it, then you're gonna go, well, fuck. I appreciate this job or this car more than anything. That's how I look at it by going the college system. Don't just fucking expect to be paying on a platter. Do it yourself. Go out, make the network yourself. Um, not saying you can't use your networks, but for me, I had no networks. So I had to start from scratch. I emailed 50, 60 Div 1 schools and only got a few back. Out of a few, there was a few interested, like t uh, five. Out of those five, I went with one, which was Maryland, and I got the position. So um, it is a long, uh, you're going to have to give yourself at least a year to plan it or to get it ready before you go. But man, it's worth it. Um, you get um, experience at coaching high level reps with high level athletes. That's the difference between Australia. You can't be exposed. And the thing is in Australia, it's not, and I've talked, this, uh, I've talked about this to people before. In Australia, it's not, um, it's not like, um, uh, how, how would I say it, Alex? It's not, um, it's not common practice. It doesn't, it's not like in Australia, there's like a, a, a common understanding of what SNC is or athlete development. It's not. Like you think about it, in Australia, physios, everyone knows, everyone knows they're all a physio, right? Yes? I'm not going to say it's good or bad, but in my opinion, that's fucked. That is fucked. Why the fuck would you want to know someone who rehabs your checks? You need a physio. There's nothing against physios. But don't you think it's fucked? Everyone knows who a physio is? Everyone knows what a fucking physio is. Does anyone know what a strength and conditioning coach is? No. It's fucked. It's such a reactive approach to injury. So my thing is, it's fuck. I mean, this is annoying me. I don't care if we have to be here all day to understand, remember the word. word. Come on, help me out here. This is your job, come on. It's like ingrained. It's ingrained in their culture. It's not ingrained here, is it? Do you see what I'm saying? It's not ingrained. So it's not like you can say to yourself, oh, I'm gonna go X, Y, Z, and I'm gonna get some experience coaching applied knowledge, regardless if it's amateurs or juniors. You still get kickback. Listen to this story. You st in Australia, we're still getting kickback. If you're an amateur based sporting club and you get a sports science graduate, fucking wanting some experience for free, you're a dumb fucking idiot to say no to it, really. You're the fucking reason this industry's getting fucking held back, you fucking moron. Moreover, people like you, and I've experienced them, and I'm just pointing at the camera because you know who I'm talking about, is people with amateur ranks who say shit like you don't need SNC, you don't need sports science. You're doing your players a disservice in your team, regardless of an amateur-based team, you fucking idiot. Morons. Dickheads. Idiots. Can you believe that? Man, I've had, I've had students who've told me I've been knocked back from free work from amateur-based clubs. Fucking idiots. Do you know what that annoys me, though? Do you know what annoys me? Think about the benefit, not only for the young kids. Like, I'm always thinking about the industry developing and helping these, these young sh... I never had... Like, you never, apart from semi-pro or pro sport in Australia, what the fuck do you do? Where do you get experience? Even in pro sport, they're not going to let you coach reps. In the college system, I was coaching reps after the second week. Do you understand what I'm saying, Al? Do you understand how you get experience, you get coaching reps? You, exactly, so the more times you're exposed to something, the better you're gonna get at it. How do you get better at coaching? By coaching! You don't get better reading a textbook, do you? So I, I think that you can read, fuck, here's the thing, you can read a textbook all you want on, 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 on the science behind what we do, but until you apply that in the real world, and I keep saying this to people, and I keep going around, I go around the, my workshops, I keep saying this. The longer I do this, dude, I'm telling you, I'm starting to say, I'm 32 this year, right? 32 in October, October 14, right? Man, if I've learned one thing, it, at the start for me, it was all about sets, reps, rest periods, physiology, neuromuscle, neuro all these, the, the foundation of knowledge, right? Now it's opposite, right? I'm not saying that's not important, right? Now, you know what it's about now for me? Communication, relationship building, that's it. I'm not saying I'm not gonna keep learning, I will. But will one paper change everything that I've thought of? Everything that's worked for me, will I change everything? 
Of course not. I'm, gonna throw, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. What I'm going to do is refine. I'll give you an example for everyone out there. He's going to call me out on this, right? 2012, go back to my Facebook. Was I Artie Allen? Yes. Was I front squatting? Yes. Was I back squatting? Yes. Was I doing split squat, hip uh, bridges, hip thrust, power press? Was I hit, lit, uh, pushing something heavy? Was I sprinting? Was I chasing? Yes! What's the difference now, Alex? What is the difference? Experience, communication, relationship. And that's all I've refined it. And I might have added a little bit and got rid of that, yeah. But that was the small things. My big rocks, they stayed the same. Coco Bambino. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Really? Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coco. Keep going! No! It's mine. Get away. That's mine. My long-term aspirations are to be an AFL strength and conditioning coach. Oh. Currently oh. working towards my bachelor in Ireland. I'm wondering if you could give me some guidance into what I need to be looking at doing to give myself this opportunity in the future. Oh, mate. Oh, where do I begin with this one? Okay, listen. Um, listen, man. I'll be completely honest with you. Um... One eternity later. Okay, think about this way. In Australia, athletic development or sports science is not still, it's, it's still really in its infancy. An and that's in its infancy as well. Right. Infancy is just starting, right? In America, developed. Here, very, very small industry, right? Meaning, not a lot of jobs, right? I'm not saying you can't do it, right? And I'm not hating on people who do do it. I don't give a fuck. Whatever you want to do, do it. I want to be private sector, fine. The one thing I hate though is the guys in, and, and you know what? It, it, I know a lot of mates in pro sport, but there's a lot of guys in pro sport who just fucking think they're better than everyone because they are in pro sport. What they do is like, I'm in pro sport, so I use that title almost immunity not to question anything. Or I'm, I'm just because I work pro sport makes you good. It doesn't, like in any industry. Um, it's not what you it's not what you know, it's who you know most of the time in that and it's politics. I'm not saying that every guy in pro sports like that. There's fucking gun coaches in pro sport, like there's guns coaches in the private sector. And the reason why I did the private sector was to develop the name of the private sector in Australia because I was like, there's a, a lot of really good coaches in the private sector that can't get job that 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 might want to go to pro sport and said, no, I want to work in the private sector because I want to make a vote more change or I want to I want to you know I want to own my own business have bit of financial freedom. That's the reason why I did it is because I just couldn't personally, I just looked at Joe DeFranco and my thing was there's no private sector in Australia, no one pushing it. So I'll just do it myself. So that's why I, that was my tribe because there were so many students doing sports science and then afterwards they'd finish sports science and then they wouldn't do anything to do in the sports science field. How many people do you know like that? I know so many people with a master's degree, they leave the field. What is the point of doing a master's degree or working in sales? And I had enough of that because I'm, th you know how my thought process Alex was, my thought process was, think about how many people, people play sport in Australia. Fucking a lot, right? Think about how many fucking injuries there are at the moment. Too many. How do we prevent injuries? Prop athletic development. How do we proper rehab injuries? Prop athletic development. So I thought to myself, if someone could come out there, there's so many students per fucking year, so many clubs, yet no one was willing to invest because no one understood it. So my thing was, I had to sell it. You needed a figurehead, you want to sell it. That's why I became that guy, is to, to sell it. Love me or hate me, I don't give a fuck, I've told you that. My thing is always about marketing and selling myself. I have to sell strength and conditioning, I'm gonna make it sexy. Because who are we up against? We're up against people who know how to market better than I do. But when you have the knowledge and then you, know, you have passion, you can't be beaten. You can't be beaten. So that's why I've done it. I did to want to work in the private sector. Now, if you want to work in pro sport, I have no issue with that, but I'll tell you one thing. What I know, and hey, once again, I've always said, I will never talk about a subject I don't understand, I've never done. I don't understand pro sport through any workings, I don't care. I will say this from what my mates have told me. A lot of politics, got to be willing to work for nothing for a long time, and if you do make it, you might get cut very quickly, there's no job security. But that's the same with my job. I have to make my own money, it's no job security, but I love that. Like, I put my passion, don't, and Mick, Mick Shivarotti, I'll use this, or Terry Condon, don't just chase the tracksuit. For young kids out there, don't just want to work pro sport just because it's like you want to tell your friends and family you work for a uh, pro sporting club. Like what, you're basing your own self-worth self on working for an a, like a pro sport team? That's fucking retarded. Like fucking retarded. And I used to be that way when I was 22. I used to think that as well. Because none of the unis ever teach you about the private sector. They only, do they, do they say anything about the private sector to you? Never, why do they? Think about fucking how many jobs are in the fucking private sector. Do you know how fucked that is, bro, to think about that? Like, the unis will never ever talk about private sector and developing it, yet they're having for these kids to get a fucking master degree in sports, science, high performance sport, yet there's no fucking jobs. Do you think that's right, bro? No, 
not at all. And then someone came out, and I fucking tagged him on this post. Someone come, called me out and goes, you only say that, and this fucking did my head. And you don't only get annoyed when it's fucking not true. This guy goes, you only care about people on the private sector because it's going to line your pockets. Are you fucking serious? I'd love to fucking know his name. I'd call him out, that fuckwit. Works for a fucking needful team. Get fucked, idiot. That did my fucking head in. That did my fucking head in. What, what, what? Me, trying to develop the private sector, so, and you know this, because oh, you've seen me. He reckons, because I'm developing the private sector to line my pockets. To, to line my pockets, Alex. That's what he said to me, on Facebook. You're creating more complaints um, yourself. Mate, this, mate, what, I'm gonna find his name. Whatever your name was, right? You're a fucking idiot, right? Number one, I want you to come to Melbourne, right? I want you to come to Melbourne when you're here. I don't want to meet with you one on one. I'm, and I won't be aggressive or anything. I'm not it's like that. But I want to explain to your face. And you, you look in my fucking eyes and you can see my eyes right now. If you honestly think I did this to line my pocket, you're an idiot. That annoys me. Number one, I'm, I did it to develop the industry and create more awareness and jobs. How many other people were, and you saw this, how many people were actually pushing out? high level applied sports science videos knowledge, and putting their balls on the line. If you think you can do a better job, then you fucking do it. You know, I didn't have to do this, did I? Because before I did this, it was like SNC was like a fucking trade secret or special secret. I'm not saying I was the only one doing it as well. So don't be like, oh, just saying it's you. No, I'm not saying I was the only one, but I'm saying I was the one who fucking heavily marketed to fucking help this industry develop, to help more jobs, to help more sports science students. This fucking bench getting knocky. That pissed me off. That fucking annoyed me. Because I didn't do it to line my pockets. I make more competitors for myself. I make more. How the fuck does that even work? And then people have the audacity to say that to me. Get fucked. Fuck off. I have more passion, more love for this industry than any of you. Not you guys if you're watching that. I like you. Keep watching, Woodford. Anyway, that's my... What was the question again? I don't think you got an answer. Go, go. What was the question? What oh, to work in the AFL. Yeah, listen. Understand that don't just choose it just because you want to chase the track suit. Don't chase it because you want your friends to think you're cool. Chase it because if you really want to do it, then do it. But understand it's going to take a while. You're from the UK. Good luck. All right, Ross Beeman. I've had some placement experience working with a couple of football soccer teams around me. I'm just looking for some insight on recommended literature to read or just some advice on how to become the best coach I can. Would you recommend sticking to one sport or discipline, traveling around to see how other coaches work or look at game <sighs> Just give games? me the phone, give me the phone. I would read as much, I used to call this a rule. Um, when I was younger, I used to just read any any piece of information out. Even if I, man, even if I didn't know it was good or bad, I'd just fucking read it. I wouldn't give a fuck. I, I was like a sponge, I'm a sponge, I'll just read. Now, am I saying that I took everything in? No, of course not. I was a kid, right? And me, most people think I've got ADD. And by the way, just to let you know, I don't have ADD. I've been tested for ADD. So I remember, well, it's good, is it? I think it's positive that you don't have ADHD. Yes. Well, I wouldn't give a fine fuck if I had it or not. It doesn't really matter. It's got me to this point. So imagine they turn around and said, I have ADD. It doesn't, does it change anything you do? Are you going to try and fix it? Am I really good looking? No. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, buddy. Um, so... Yeah, anyway, I just want to tell you there. Um, literature. literature. So, when I was young, yeah, I'm like a sponge. I'd read, even if it's good or bad, doesn't really matter. But you're still reading it, right? But then you can make your views based on how you feel. I said this. I said this to uh, the internships, uh, the, the Cert 3 and 4 students. I said this to the guys that workshop on the weekend. I will say this to you guys. Listen, the thing about this industry and the reason why it is so fucked, in my opinion, is there's no perfect way of doing anything. It's, it's so, there's so many factors that can play into account, right? I could reel off, so many factors, right? So what you need to understand is when someone writes an article, I look at it as good, bad, nor indifferent. You know what I mean? Like everyone's gonna have their own little, their own little way of doing it, right? Am I saying it's right or wrong? Sometimes it's wrong, completely wrong. Look, I'll give you an example. Hi, Nardi. Nardi Aguilar coming out and saying shit like, I oh, squat some bad lift. The, 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 the reason why guys like that do it is because they want a guru. When they guru, People are so dumb, they're gonna fucking actually feel like, oh, he's got the magical equation this. So that's why people go to him. He's a cult. Because they think that his is the only way. And that's, that's what he wants his followers to follow on. He literally will pay out every discipline. And people say that I, I was like that. No, I'm not like that. I, I know I'm, I was smarter than that. I did a little bit for marketing at the start when I started this. And I was probably a bit angry at myself. But I know for a fact, 
a lot of things, a lot of training systems work, but you don't need to worry about training systems. Worry about principles, not training systems. Okay, methods are many principles, a few apply principles to a practical sense for each individual athlete. So my thing is, when you read an article, take it with a grain of salt, but also think about it. See you, Dale. Um, so think about it that way. Think about um, everyone's going to have a background. Everyone's going to have a certain different little, what they believe in, right? So someone, I'll give an example. Someone might believe in kettlebells. Someone might not. Someone might believe in only body weight. Someone might not. Someone might believe in don't back squat, only front squat. That's fine. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm going to do what I do best and they're scared for results. And that's all that matters, right? We need to stop, and I talked about this last time, stop worrying about fucking training systems or what this dude says and start worrying about getting results. Fucking the amount of people who message me and be like, I'm so worried to put this up on Facebook, someone's going to call me out. Who gives a fuck if they call you out? I mean, I've been abused more than anyone. I don't give a fuck. I'll get abused. Like for me, I don't... I don't know, I don't care. It's, it's more a reflection on them. I don't know. I, if I call someone out, I call them out on my Facebook. I'm not going to go on their fucking Facebook. Why the fuck would I do that? So if you read something, read it. But don't fucking take it as gospel. Like this dude saying, came out and wrote 10 things simply faster about um, uh, the worst miss, like a miss is like glute activation. And someone goes, oh, see Woodford, it's a myth. I'm like, oh, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, give you. Do you think I'm going to stop doing glute, glute work because the said, oh, can you, can, you, can you get rid of that word? Can you get rid of that word? Because that guy said that? No, I don't give a fine fuck. I don't care. I'm getting to a stage in my life, I don't actually give a shit about certain people and things. Like literally, someone will try and say something to me and I'm actually at the point in my life now and dude, it's so beautiful when you get there. Like you, you're young, so might, but you're very mature for your age. I don't know if you're there yet, you might get there, but it's so beautiful when you just don't care about anyone apart from you. Like in terms of, you know who you are, you know where you're going in life, it's so beautiful. I used to be the opposite of that, bro, and it took me so long to understand who I was. And now I just don't care. Like so, that dude messaged me, I'm like, I don't, what do you want me to say? That? Like, I, I, I don't write anything negative on the post. He just tagged me. I don't even like it, nothing. Well, like, oh, cool. How did you make that switch? How would you tell, help other people try and make that switch? I told you, man, America. I just, you have, everyone's gonna have a life experience, a life defining, that was my defining, it was either survival or conquer. It was like Drew Wilson said, survival or conquer. I'm not gonna be a bitch. I was not gonna be a fucking bitch. I got pushed around. Fuck you, I'm not getting pushed around. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna change the game. If you do like me, hey, sweet, that's cool. Let's be friends. If you hate me, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't really care about anything really anymore. I care about my family, I care about my friends, I care about Woodford, and in terms of I care about you guys. Very rarely do I really care about something really anymore. Um, I lost it, I stopped giving a fuck about it. I just, I don't like drama anymore. I don't, I'm just too old, bro. I just, I wanna like life. I, wanna, I love life actually. Have I had ups and downs, Alex? Ah, every business has ups and downs. The guy behind you could tell me that, tell you that. He'll tell you about the ups and downs we've had. But I'm alive, not dead. My mate died of melanoma two weeks ago. You know, fuck, what a story. 21 years old, gets fucking melanoma. Tw tw the pr in the prime of your life, Alex, gets cut down by melanoma for 10 years, you fight it. Give him three months to live. Put life in perspective, doesn't it? My grandpa died on the same week. Puts life in perspective. I ain't gonna fucking worry about the small shit. You get to an age where you stop giving a fuck. I used to care about fucking what I was wearing, you know? I've actually stopped. Because you know why, Alex? There's more important things in life than me worrying about driving a fucking Mustang or having a nice watch. Fuck it, who cares? I'm done with that shit now, man. Death taught me that. It really didn't. Maybe a bit of maturity as well, but... Um, yeah. As for Ross's question... Oh, fuck, sorry, man. We should call it this a psychological hour, the half an hour. Looking for some insight and recommended literature to be the best coach I can be. Would you very recommend sticking to one sport, traveling around the world to see other coaches? Man, listen, here's the thing with that shit. My opinion is, it's, it's not found by sitting down in a classroom. Yeah, you need, an undergrad, you need an undergrad. You don't need, I just don't need a master's, but you need experience. Go travel the world, man. Get different experiences, different cultures, all right? Learn different intricacies of different sports, what they like, what they don't like. That's gonna give you more well-rounded approach on being a coach. But I'll tell you something, what was his name? Ross. Ross, you know the biggest thing to learn is interpersonal skills. That's the most important thing, man. Learn to communicate. All right, guys, so that's the end of episode 32. Guys, thank you for watching. It is a privilege every week to answer your questions. Um, we want to build this show up to be something real special. So we're taking slow. <clears throat> 
Every week I love answering your questions. I do go off topic, but that's who I am. You either love it or hate it, either way. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks always to my supporters, my ambassador, uh, supporters, my sponsors, macironfitness.com.au for your equipment needs. LP support the best compression in Australia. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Guys, episode 32 is done and dusted. Hopefully you loved it. I'll see you next week for episode 33 of Ask Woodford. Thank you very much.